Judge Manning's Court. A wife wants a DPO against her husband. This hearing is very disturbing and heartbreaking, so please take caution while watching. You will hear testimony about suicide and DV. If you feel these discussions may trigger you, please don't watch. I'll catch you in the next video. Please stay safe and let's get into the video. Mr. Morris um, had attempted a suicide um, when he was a teenager and shooting himself in the face. And at that point, that's when he believed that he there was another world, meaning that you know, you're know you not of this world, um, however, have passed into another. So when yeah, sorry, I had to hit the Zoom button. Good morning, Judge. Um, we are here to move forward today in seeking a 12-month protective order um, in the matter of Heidi Howard Morris versus Mr. Morris, uh, uh, Mr. Joshua Adam Morris. Um, I did have a moment to speak with Mr. Morris. Um, we were not able to reach um, any sort of agreement by way of very brief opening, Your Honor, if I may. Um, the parties are husband and wife. They've been married um, since May 15th of 2015. Um, we have filed an action for divorce. I do want to let the court know that action was filed on March 14th, 2023, and was assigned to Judge Farmer with a 30-day status set for April 18th um, of 2023. Uh, we have not, as of yet, been able to secure service on Mr. Morris. As you'll hear today, he's located right now in the state of Kentucky um, with his mother. Um, but in terms of the petition, we filed this petition on March the 3rd um, with the court at the same date that the court uh, issued its ex parte order, um, and we had a private process server serve um, Mr. Morris on the same date. Um, Mr. Morris has engaged, and you'll hear testimony today, in um, apparently he was he was has some um, mental, he was having a mental health crisis, um, had made threats um, against his life and the life of um, the petitioner, his wife, Heidi, as well as their child, uh, Juliet. They have, the parties have one minor child, Juliet Morris, uh, who is 14 years old um, and is a student here at um, Martin Luther King Jr. High School in Atlanta, or excuse me, middle school in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, we are seeking today the entry of um, a protective order. The testimony is going to be able to establish that there has been a history of um, domestic violence in these parties' relationships, um, two of which um, were actually documented. Um, Mr. Morris um, was arrested for family violence battery in 2008, and then again in 2011. Testimony is going to show that there has maintained it has maintained um, a violent um, a, a violent atmosphere in the party's home and uh, which culminated on or about uh, February the 18th with uh, Mr. Morris stating that he wanted to uh, he he wanted um, to be the this that Heidi and Juliet go to a, another world. Um, which was communicated to Heidi that he wanted to kill them. Um, you're going to hear testimony today that um, Mr. Morris um, had attempted a suicide um, when he was a teenager and shooting himself in the face. And at that point, that's when he believed that he there was another world, meaning that you know, you're know you not of this world, um, however, have passed into another. So when he communicated that, um, Ms. Morris took that as a direct threat against her life. Um, uh, he followed up, uh, you'll hear testimony that he followed up that comment, um, not only with um, the fact that he believed and could understand how people annihilate their families, at which point Miss um, Morris fled to her mother's home uh, outside of Statesboro with a minor child until such time as she could uh, secure this temporary protective order. You're also going to hear testimony that um, prior to the entry of the protective order that Mr. Morris had contacted both um, the minor child and Miss Morris advising that he was going to kill himself um, while they were gone and that they did not need to come home alone. And you'll see um, evidence today showing the same. Finally, Your Honor, you will see evidence today that after the entry of the protective order in service on March 3rd, that um, on or around, excuse me, March 4th, um, Mr. Morris had contacted his brother to essentially contact the minor child for him in violation of this TPO. So, you know, again, this is a volatile situation, and we would ask that um, the court enter a 12-month uh, protective order upon the hearing of evidence. Mr. Morris, are you planning on having any witnesses? Yes, ma'am. Both my mom and my brother are here. All right. They can't be in the room with you. Yes, Sasha. Thank you. Have a good weekend, Sasha. Thank you, Judge. You too. So they, they, need, to, they need to leave? Is that they right? Absolutely, they absolutely cannot be in the room with you if they're going to testify. Okay, sure. Hey, you. One small moment.
you have any witnesses for speeding wheel? No, Your Honor. Okay, uh, they're, they're gone. All right, if both of you raise your right hand. Your military right. Ms. Morris. Ms. Morris. Heidi. Ms. Moore. There you go. Do you elsewhere affirm testimony about to give is the truth, all truth, nothing but the truth? Just nod your hands. All right, you can place your hands down. All right, go ahead, Ms. Penny. Well, you can go ahead and start asking. You can call your first witness. Okay, um, I'd like to call Heidi Howard Morris. If you could unmute, Ms. Morris. Sorry about that. No, nope, you're fine. Um, can you state your name to the court, please? My name is Heidi Nicole Howard Morris. Okay. Um, and Ms. Howard Morris, um, you were related to um, Joshua Adam Morris through marriage. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And you were married to Mr. Morris on uh, May 15th of 2005. Is that correct? 2010. 20, excuse me, 2010. Excuse yeah. me. All right. And um, you all have one um, child together. Is that correct? That's correct. And what's that child's name? Juliet Morris. Okay. And um, what is her birth date? Her birthday is January 17th, 2009. Okay. Um, now, um, Ms. Morris, I want to take you through the, um, you filed a petition seeking a family violence temporary protective order. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. I want to take you through the, um, the actions that happened on or about uh, February 18th. Okay. 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 Um, on February 18th, were you at home with, um, were you at home that date? Uh, yes, we're, we're speaking of the, the evening that began this. Um, yes. okay. Yes. I was at home. Okay. Who was home with you? Well, um, Juliet was here, but asleep and Adam was also here. Um, and I imagine Evan, um, my brother-in-law who was living with us at the time was here as well, but he, he would have been downstairs. I, um, yeah, that's it. Okay. And your brother-in-law who um, is living with you, is there a separate, is there, was there a separate living quarters in your house? There is a finished basement and he was in the guest bedroom in that basement. Okay. All right. So I'd like you to um, tell the court um, how it came about um, that you had a conversation that evening that concerned you with uh, Mr. Morris. Um, well, the events of, of that evening went basically like this. Adam came to me and said that he realized that we were always telling Juliet, our child, to come to us when um, she was having mental health problems. And he realized that he had not been doing that um, and he wanted to talk about it. And he said that um, he said that he couldn't help wondering if Julia and I would be better off in the other world. And I said, do you mean that you wonder if Juliet and I would be better off without you? And he said, no, not exactly. And then he told me that um, he had been in this really dark place two other times um, in, in our history. Um, both of those times period time periods were times in which he was very mean to me. Um, and, and I said, Adam, Juliet and I want to be in this world. And he nodded. Um, and then he kind of leaned in to give me a hug. And that was how that event happened. I, I wasn't really able to sleep comfortably after that. Um, so when, so when he made that statement to you, what did you interpret that to mean that he was saying to you? About the other world? Mm -hmm. You mean? Yes. Well, he, he over, he, he has a, an ongoing idea that, um, that when you, well, all right, it, it, it stems back from him shooting himself. He feels that he shot himself and then that person died and he woke up in this other world living another life as another, you know, another being. And that essentially that's what happens when people die. We wake up in some other existence. And lately, Angel and I have both had um, various health issues. And I mean, I took it to mean that he was saying, you know, if we died, we'll wake up in some other world without our did you let me ask did you think that he was going to harm you um 
in that moment, no. But here's the thing about Adam. <laughs> he has an explosive temper. And I thought that it was obvious that those ideas and other ideas, because when you tell someone an idea like that, when you say that that's in your head, that's the tip of the iceberg. What's really in your head goes deeper. Let and me ask, so, when you said, let me follow up. When you said he has an explosive temper, how does that, how does that actually come out? Um, has, has he put his hands on you before? Yes. Okay. Has he struck you? Uh, no. Has he choked you? Yes. Okay. Has he jumped on top of you? Yes. Okay. Has he thrown items at you? Many times. When was the last time he threw something at you? Uh, I mean, the last time that immediately comes to mind because I'm looking at the stain on the ceiling right now was a milkshake, uh, you know, six months ago or so, you know, give or take. Now, um, you heard my opening that there was two times that um, police and the courts were involved with um, Mr. Morris and domestic violence, right? That's right. And how did those cases end? How did they end? Oh, excuse me, actually strike that. Um, did you, did you do any, did you intervene on any of those cases um, on his behalf? You mean in court? Correct. Yes, I did. And what did you do? Um, well, the first time I, um, I said it was my fault. And the second time I said he was mentally ill. Um, did you ask the court to dismiss those cases? I asked for the first case to be dismissed and I asked for the second to be diverted, I believe. Was the first time your fault? No. Second time your fault? Not at all. Not, no. Okay. And there were individuals who saw these actions take place? Well, the first time was reported by another, just a random stranger. Um, the second time, you know, the EMTs came and okay. the, I mean, sure. Okay. Have you reported and my neighbors as well? <laughs> have you reported, um, and um, you, in, within the last year, have you reported any acts of violence um, from Mr. Morris to the police? No. Okay. Now, um, you yourself um, have had, um, you mentioned that you were worried about um, Mr. Morris's mental health, correct? That's right. Okay. Um, did you make any statements to him um, after he told you that, you know, he thought you and Juliet would be better off in another world? Did you make any statements to him about his mental health? I tried for a month to get him to see a psychiatrist. Four weeks, I tried. He, he told me that the problem was that I essentially wouldn't shut up about it and I was stressing him out. Okay. Now, um, <clears throat> how long after he made these statements did you, um, or excuse me, did, um, did you leave the marital residence? Well, for uh, four weeks after, <laughs> because he made that comment about, uh, about uh, you know, a comment of, of sympathy with the idea of fi family annihilation. And I, I mean, that scared me. It just, it scared me. I, Angel, Juliet, she was, she was going um, to visit my mother for spring break, winter break anyway. And I, I grabbed my purse and said, I'm going with her. Okay. Now, while you were, um, so you went to your mother's home with Angel, is that correct? That's right. Angel is Juliet's nickname, yes. Angel. And, and, and for the court's clarification, when you reference Adam, even though Mr. Morris's first name is Joshua, you all call him Adam, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Okay. Now, um, where did your mother reside? Statesboro, Georgia. Okay. Now, while you were in Statesboro, did you have an opportunity to speak with um, Adam? Um, well, I, I spoke as in listened to him on the phone a couple of times, um, but mainly we communicated through text. Okay. Um, I'm going to share what I have um, pre-marked for identification purposes as Petitioner's Exhibit 1. Sure. Um, uh, can everybody see this? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, do you recognize this text? Yes. Okay. What is this text of? This is a text of Adam um, telling me that I live to destroy him, not to come back to the house alone and pretending to send me money that he didn't actually send me. When he told you not to come back to the house alone, um, did he make any threats on his life um, to you? That had already happened. I mean, I took this as a direct threat to me. 
not not related to his life. Um, although it, it could have been interpreted that way as well, because the two phone calls, one to me and one to my daughter's phone in front of me, both of those, he said he was going to kill himself. He told my child it was my fault. I'm sorry, say that again. So while you were in Statesboro, he contacted your daughter and told your daughter that he was going to kill himself. Yes, he said that it would be the last time that she would ever speak to him and that it was my fault. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I would move to admit um, petitioners one. Any objections, sir? No objection. All right, it's admitted. Do you want me to place that in the chat, Your Honor? Sure, that's fine. Okay. All right. Um, so <clears throat> did you did you go back to the house um, after receiving um, that text message telling you don't be there alone? Me? Correct. Yes. I didn't go back to the house until the temporary protective order was in place. Okay. All right. Um, and forgive me, I'm just trying to go ahead and get this over to the court. Yeah, I interject. About what? Well, that isn't actually true. She did come back no, to that. No, you can't do that, but you'll be able to testify shortly. So yeah, you can't yes, say she's lying. Okay. Um, now, you have had, um, you've had your own mental health struggles in recent years. Is that correct? Me? Yes, how Again? do you? Oh, yes, yes, I have. Okay. And you're presently treating with a physician, is that right? That's correct. Okay. And um, have you ever, um, or excuse me, and um, after the entry of the protective order, did um, Mr. Morris make any contact with Juliet, your daughter? He did not make contact with Juliet. He did attempt to make contact with Juliet. And how did he attempt to make contact with Juliet? He texted his brother, my brother-in-law, and asked my brother-in-law to speak to Juliet. Did that, um, and when did that happen? That was that happened, on March the 4th? The what now? Was that on March the 4th? It, would, it was pretty immediate. Maybe the next day. Was that the 4th or the 3rd? I mean, was it, um, I think it probably was the 4th. Now, um, presently, um, you're asking the courts today to enter a protective order preventing Mr. Morris from contacting you. Is that right? That's correct. And um, preventing him from coming within um, a certain number of yards away from you. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, you are, are you asking the court today to allow Mr. Morris to have um, telephone contact with um your daughter, Juliet. That's my hope, yes. Okay. Um, and are you asking the court today to allow him to have um, daily telephone contact for 15 minutes every day between the hours of 5 p.m. and 8 p.m.? That seems reasonable, I suppose. Okay. Now, are you asking the court to um, allow Mr. Morris to have supervised parenting time with Juliet? Yes. Okay. And in terms of supervisors, um, who are you requesting be um, a supervisor for Mr. Morris? I thought Cherie Morris was the ideal fit. And who is Cherie Morris? His mother. Okay. And now, um, given that um, you, you've heard and understand that we have a uh, divorce pending, there is um, spring break that is coming up for the children in APS. Um, would you you would be would you be okay with um, allowing um, Juliet to visit with Mr. Morris so long as there was um, his mother was supervising during the spring break? I would be okay with that. Yes, I think that would be good. Are you asking the court today to require that um, Mr. Morris um, uh, continue um, any, um, or excuse me, get mental health evaluations and continue um, any treatment um, regarding those mental health evaluations? Yes, I am. Are you asking the court today to um, uh, have Mr. Morris um, uh, participate in an anger management evaluation and follow up with any treatment recommendations from that? Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. 
Um, I have no further questions for this uh, witness, Your Honor. And I'm sorry, I'm going to put that um, petitioner's one in the chat as, okay. as we speak. Mr. Morris, do you have any questions, specific questions? We're not going to argue. Questions for Ms. Morris. Uh, yes. Um, Heidi, if you don't mind, will you please tell the court about your belief a year ago uh, in a few months that I was a serial killer and that I was going to kill you? Your Honor, I object to the form of a question. Um, rephrase your question, sir. Ms. Howard, in 2020, excuse me, let me reference my notes. In the fall of 2021, did you take an interest in a local murder? Your Honor, I'm going to object as to relevance. Well, what does that have to do with anything? Ma'am, I'm trying to establish that the petitioner is, uh, she suffers from bipolar disorder. She has delusions. Stop, stop. You an MD? No, but it's she diagnosed and she is. Any sort of diagnosis of anybody. If she wants to talk about it, she can. Number two, if she gets obsessed with some murder, most of the world was obsessed with the Alex Murdoch trial. She became, she, in the. I don't ask her questions that are relevant. This is relevant because she developed a belief. That's her question. Heidi, did you develop a belief in 2021 that you later determined to be false that I intended to kill you? Your Honor, again, I'm going to object to relevance. Relevance. Is, I'm sorry? What's the relevance? I'm, I'm, how is this not clear that it's relevant? She's alleging that... Um, She's, I'm trying to demonstrate. She's that, alleged recently that you did something. So ask her a question, follow up basically with what she's been asked. No further questions. Do you have any, uh, anything else, Ms. Honeywell? Um, no, Your Honor, not this time. All right, go ahead, Mr. Morris. I'll hear from you, your side. Yes, ma'am. Um, okay, so if I may now say uh, in the fall of 2021, my wife, uh, she became, I can back up. I'm so sorry. I got a little flustered. Okay. Um, okay. Ms. Howard is bipolar one. It's a debilitating. No, 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 no. No? No, okay. we're not going to talk about any diagnoses. You're not a doctor. We're not going to talk about that. And if she has some mental health diagnoses and she's seeking help for that, excellent. Fantastic. Don't want to hear about it. That's not relevant. What's relevant is violence, period. Move there on. has been no violence, um, period. Is is the bottom line here? Um, the issue, the the occasions in two thousand eight and two thousand eleven. Well, um, get in twenty twenty three. Okay, yes, ma'am. I tried to come to her and tell her in a moment of crisis that I felt that I needed to tell someone that I was feeling like a danger to myself. That I have a safety plan that I developed in therapy. The first thing on it after self care, like fails, is to talk to my wife about this, and so that's what I did. Uh, I do have, like, as she mentioned, um, a kind of abstract way of thinking about things from having shot myself in the head. It's a little weird. It's not like an actual belief system. It's just a way to help me understand things and make sense of the world. Um, we talked about this at length. Toward the end of it, she asked me uh, this, the question about whether or not they'd be better off in another world. The entire context of the conversation up to that point had been about me dying and like other worlds being created in that way. And so I said, yes, like, I mean, that was the whole point of what I was saying was that I felt like maybe I was the problem and that I needed to just get out. Now, after I talked to her, I felt a lot better. Um, the next day she came to me, she gave me some of her old medication and demanded that I take it and told me that I needed to see a psychiatrist by the end of the day, which is frankly not really that easy to do. Um, we had a lot of other things going on in life. I tried to explain to her that I was absolutely willing to see a psychiatrist. Um, but that I wanted to get a few of these other things situated first because we just had a lot going on. I didn't feel like I could really take that on. Um, within a few days, she fled to our friend's house. Um, and while she was there, she told them what was going on. And they talked to her and she came back home and said every, everything was good. And I thought, I thought this was settled. The further comments that she's referencing came when we were talking about the Alex Murdoch trial. And I just, I didn't know very much about it. All I knew is what he had supposedly done and, I, and how it had happened. And um, I said that it didn't make a lot of sense to me because 
it it seemed premeditated and so it, it couldn't it's have been a fit of rage Move on. which is what okay. i would understand or a something like a uh, a delusional mother drowning their kids that makes sense this is what i said that she took issue with and says that that was somehow threatening to her uh, i was just trying to relate to the case as like a juror and that is really all she took off basically the next day and i haven't seen my child in a month and uh i'm out of my home i don't have any of my belongings and this has been a nightmare um i would like to ask the court i i really don't have any further um need to see or speak with heidi howard morris um uh she's filed for divorce i'm planning to uh go along with that like with it it's easily going as possible i don't want any re i don't want any resistance in the us becoming further apart i promise you this i do however really 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 love my child i'm a good father um and we have a good connection and i really think that it's important for her to have a sense of balance in her life um i just i i don't have a problem with my mom being here but i this is beyond the pale honestly i it, it i'm really surprised that he's asking for this to be frank you have any questions miss pennywell very briefly your honor okay um mr morris <laughs> excuse me did you communicate to Juliet that you were going to kill yourself? I told her that I would probably not be able to speak with her again and that uh, I wanted her to know that I loved her and that that there was nothing she could have done. And you told that to your 14-year-old daughter on the phone while she was at her grandmother's house? I She was actually in the car, and I do regret doing that, but I... Okay. I I was very freaked out and scared at this whole thing. Like she just left with no, um, no explanation really. And, and no communication about what I could do in order to make it. All right. I, I now let me ask, um, wasn't finished. I did become quite upset and, um, and I did, I considered it. I was, I was about to, I was, I was on the verge, I, but I didn't. And, um, and I'm here today. I changed my mind. And, uh, because of her now you told you saw um what was already entered into evidence as petitioners one um where you told heidi morris that she did not need to come back to the house alone correct that's right yeah um did you contact did you try and contact um your daughter after you were served with the tpo i absolutely did not i'm not sure what miss howard is referencing at all um did you ask father, your brother to contact your daughter i him? absolutely did not he offered to do that and i i did i've told consistently everyone i've been i have been strict about not like i don't even want people to be in the room if they call her i don't want any any i love my daughter so much and i don't want to mess this up have you been able to um are you are you been able to treat with um a mental health professional yes yes i absolutely went um yesterday and um i got a evaluation uh they didn't really recommend anything, but they uh, offered me therapy and I voluntarily took them up on that. Um, and, and that was uh, yesterday that you got your evaluation? That was the 15th. Okay. And have you scheduled therapy sessions? I have. Okay. And is that taking place where you are right now in Kentucky? Yes. Okay. I have no further questions at this time, Your Honor. Anything else? Mr. Morris? Um. My witnesses. Where have they been sitting? Uh, on the far, far end of the house in another room. Tell me what it is your witnesses are going to say. Uh, I'd like to ask my brother about the thing with the text messages. Because it, it says that, he, that this is the only thing saying that I tried to uh, circumvent the TPO in any way, which I did not do. I, I, and, and I would really like to clear that up. Was this a text with him involved in it? That's what is being alleged. Ms. Pennywell? Your Honor, I mean, again, um, we're not seeking we're not seeking today that um, the the court take any actions on the post um, the post service contact, but I think it was. It, I would have to wonder why it was relevant to bring it up if the court wasn't supposed to consider it. I would like to have the opportunity to clear this up. I didn't do. Well I don't have an objection, that. Your Honor. If he wants to call him, can bring him in here. Well, if he just saw you, he must have been sitting pretty daggum close. That was my mother, and I just signaled to her to, to, to go get him. But you're going to ask your mother to testify, too, and you're signaling to her? She's pretty close. She just walked out here. 
Ma'am, I'm sorry, I can't film the entire house. Oh, excuse me. Hey, can you please have a seat here? No, I, uh, I just have to sit down. Okay. How you doing, sir? If you raise your right hand for me. Right hand. You swear, yeah, you're right hand. You swear for just when anybody gives us the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes, ma'am. Without his help, tell me what it is you want to tell me. You put your hand down, sir. Go ahead. Something about a text. Tell me what you want to tell me. About a text. I'm... May I ask him the question? Don't give him the answer. Okay. Um, did I text you on any time in March asking you to Thank contact you Julia? What kind of text did he text you in March? No, I would not say that's accurate. What's accurate? Um, I did not see. I did not receive a text asking me to like provide any sort of contact between uh, Angel and my brother in March. You have a question for Ms. Pennywell? Certainly. Um, do you have any, um, do, you go by different aliases on the internet, is that correct? Um, I That's think everyone, you, names. everyone yes, has yes, names. Yes, 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 objection, relevance. Oh, no, not objection. You don't object to me telling him just yes or no. I'm oh, sorry, I was objecting to the question. I don't, I don't have an objection. Do you go by different names on the internet? Yes or no? Relevance. Yes or no, Mr. Sir? Um, I believe everyone must no, keep... No, that's not. Yeah. I want the first answer out of your mouth to be yes or no. Yes. Okay, there you go. Is one, of those, is, or one of those names Agent Mulder? No. So you've never gone by an... Um, uh, or excuse me, okay, so you've never gone by an Angel Mulder? I do not use that screen name on any website. Okay. Now, do you have um, access to... Or excuse me, since March 3rd of 2023, have you engaged in text communications with your brother? Since March 3rd? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Oh. March 3rd is the Friday that we got the, that I got the order. Don't help him, don't help him. I was, yes I am. I'm sorry, I don't know. Okay. I'm gonna show you what I've um, pre-marked for identification purposes as petitioners exhibit two. Okay. Do you recognize um, that message at the very top? Uh, yes. Who sent that message? I believe I did. Okay. And that message was sent on March 4th um, uh, of 2023? It appears so. Well, yeah. Who it appears sent so. that message to? That message would have been to my brother. Okay. And that message, can you go ahead and read it out loud? It says, what's up? Angel is asleep, but she is downstairs. I'll try and talk to her as soon as I get a good chance. Okay. Did, um, uh, Your Honor, I move to admit um, Petitioner's Exhibit 2. Any objections? No objection. All right, submit. Okay. So your brother had asked you, in fact, to talk with Angel, and you were responding to him, correct? Not, not necessarily on his behalf, no. Okay. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. You can go ahead and leave the room. What else, uh, Mr. Morris? Uh, that's all. He, yeah, many people offered to uh, try to talk. <laughs> Any other witnesses? Oh, no, ma'am. Okay, can you bring your mom in? Uh, I don't think that she'll really have much to add here. I want to talk to her. Can you bring your mom in? Oh, yes, yes, ma'am. Sorry, and Your Honor, forgive me. I just published the two in the chat. I'm sorry, I had a direct um, message earlier, so it should be there for everyone. Thank you. Are you Miss Morris? Hi, Your Honor. Miss Morris, is that your yes. name? Miss Morris, it's very nice to meet you. My name's Alex Manning. I'm the judge. So I don't know if you've been listening. So. Um, would, would you be okay supervising any type of visits between uh, Mr. Morris and, um, and the child? Of course. She's my heart. <laughs> I, I, I can imagine. I can imagine. So um, Only one of them. Yeah, so okay. She's the only one. You got another son. Tell him to get on the wall and get you some more <laughs> grandchildren. I know. 
So, so you don't have a problem doing that. Now, if, if I, and, and a lot of times what I like to do too is allow like uh, FaceTime, Skype, or Zoom visits. And then I let both parties record it. So that if anything says anything um, out of the way, and that means Miss Miss Morris also, if she says something that's out of the way that she shouldn't say, there you go. And if he says something he shouldn't say, there you go. Um, it, it's recorded and that way they can see it. Uh, Miss Pennywood, is there a guardian in the divorce? Do you think there's going to you need one? I don't know yet. Um, we're at the very, very, very initial stages. It's possible, but it's also, it's also possible depending on everybody's cooperation that we may be able to do this without a guardian. But I'm going to probably assume on the side of we're going to appoint a guardian. So, um, so Ms. Morris, I'll tell you, and Mr. Morris, and the other Ms. Morris, is that a guardian, and, and it's usually so we can get a head start on this, okay? Because most judges uh, don't like to talk to the children. Not that we don't like children, but it's a little intimidating when we try to talk to kids. Now, um, you have a guardian that works because as an investigative arm of the court, that they can go out, they can talk to the child, figure out what's going on, come back and report to the court what's going on. They talk to you, they talk to your, both your sons, they talk to Ms. Morris and, and her family, and um, and they do all that in the realm of the divorce. Now, um, and I try to appoint guardians that don't cost a lot of money because, I mean, I know people don't have a whole bunch of money to spare, and but sometimes this is necessary so that you're not dragging the child into court because I've had people bring kids into court here, and then I go in there and try to talk to them, and, you know, they're scared to death. But at least a guardian can come over and talk to them, and it's not very scary. I can maybe foresee one need, needing to be there. Um, and I want you, and I know it's got to be hard for you if you've had to struggle with this with your son having mental health issues. And I, and I applaud anybody that has mental health issues for getting help. Um, I wish that I could name 10 people after going through the pandemic that didn't have some sort of mental health issues, depression, anxiety, or something like that. And like I like to say, in my house, we medicate. One of my little doctors is on anxiety medication because <laughs> he's anxious. Slap it on him. Uh, so, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And Mr. Morris, I say this with all of my heart. And he got up. Or is he moving closer? The world is a much better place with you here. The world is a much better place with you here, not just for your mother, for your daughter, and for your brother. And I know the time gets dark. I understand that. Mr. Morris, I have heard over 17,000 domestic violence cases. That doesn't include the criminal cases that I hear. If you don't think at times that I don't go home and want to just crawl up in the bed and, you know, rock back and forth. You got another thing coming. It's very hard. I have my own therapist and I'm not ashamed of it. And I hope every good judge out there has their own therapist because they need it. Because we hear stuff, what's all the cop? We hear stuff and we see stuff that we can't unsee or we can't unhear. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And us judges also live in this small, tiny cloister that we can't talk to other people because we are so isolated. And then we're also... I don't know, proud or whatever the word is, we don't talk to one another about it for some reason because we don't want the other person to think that we're weak and that we don't get anything and that we're scared or something bothers us. But it is a much better place in the world with you in it, Mr. Morris. Have a safety plan. Have somebody that you want to talk to other than your daughter. Let your daughter be a child. Let your daughter be a kid. You don't need to tell your daughter about how you're feeling if you're depressed or if you're having thoughts. You need to, you, you've got a therapist. You can let them know. You can call plenty of... Uh, you can call plenty of people and let them know. There's phone numbers. There's all kinds of things that you can do to let people know. But definitely don't put that on your daughter. That's way too much for a kid to have to deal with, okay? Don't want to take your daughter away from you, but I want to keep her safe. Me just hearing something that you may have said about sending them to another world scares me. Scares me for you. Scares me for them. Okay? But please, get the help that you need, okay? Okay. Sorry, I just had some Girl Scout cookies. Uh, so, uh, thank you, Cece. But um, it's a much better place with all of you in there. And I applaud you for getting the help that you need, sir. Okay? I applaud you. And I applaud you, Ms. Morris. But I want to get a guardian. I don't know, is, it, is finances going to be an issue? Or are you guys going to be able to afford it? My um, initial thought, um, Your, Your Honor, um, I work a lot, um, and, I, and I want to say this to both parties, because I have cases that, you know, I, I have, there's just, guardians are there, they're not in anybody's pocket, they're there for the child and the child only. Um, my thought would be Stacey Crittenden um, of the Crittenden Law Firm in Marietta, because her retainer is 3000 so it's usually 1500 per party, and she's does an extremely thorough job or an Ashley Wine who have much lower retainers. I don't know how expansive the GAL um, investigation is going to have to be in the divorce matter. 
Well, and let me ask you a question. Do either of you have an issue with the other part where they live, their house? Do you want a guardian to go and travel and look at somebody's house? Or do both of you think that they both live in a house that's appropriate? There's nothing wrong with either home. Ms. Morris, do you find anything wrong with this house? I mean, that a guardian needs to go over and open a refrigerator and make sure there's food? Sorry, I'm having trouble with the mute button. No, no, that no problem. Because that saves a whole bunch of money if the guardian doesn't have to make a trip out to the house, open the refrigerator, and, and do stuff like that. So, um, is Miss Wine up here? I have all these people. Oh, and they just stay here. Because I think that that would be good. Um, and I do ask. Um, I do ask that you both participate and put the case number for the um, divorce on there. And if there's some reason that you folks need to come back here before you can get in front of the divorce judge, you can. So what I'll do is I'll extend this. And Ms. Pennywell, I'll let you work out whatever you want to do as far as visitation with a child with grandma supervising. And grandma, what this means if you supervise is if some chance there's in person that if you go to the store, the grandkid goes to the store with you, okay? Not that I don't trust you, Mr. Morris, but that's what supervision is. Okay? That is exactly what supervision is. It's not like she goes out and gets gas and says, I'll be right back. That baby, that baby I say that baby, that girl goes with her everywhere, okay? You can't be alone with her right now until we figure out what's going on. And both of y'all will, and like I said, don't care, doesn't matter. Fabulous, everybody's getting help. Uh, doesn't matter about any mental health diagnoses. As long as you're getting help, share it with the, um, and, and it's not going to be a, a, a black mark against your name. Like, hey, this is no good because they have this. Trust me. I would not have, if a guardian did that, you let me know because that person will never, ever, ever be a guardian again in my court if they hold something like that against you. <laughs> I can promise you that. But Mr. Moore, please get the help that you need. Oh, well, but this is not encouraging. Well, then that's a problem because it is encouraging. And I don't think you could see the positive of it. That I'm trying to get you help. And I don't, I think you need to take the cotton out of your mouth and stick out of your ears and stick it in your mouth and listen to what I'm saying. Because right now, what I could say, uh -uh, don't you hit that unmute button. Right now, what I could say is I'm not going to let you see this kid until the guardian figures out this whole investigation. But that's not what I just said. So this is encouraging what I'm saying. Because I have said nothing negative to you. Nothing. Not one single word negative to you. So keep seeing that therapist. If you only see that therapist once a week, you need to crank it up. Because I just said a whole bunch of good stuff to you. I'm giving you a chance. I want you to get better. And I want you to be in your daughter's life. But you've got to be healthy so that she can be healthy. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. So it is very positive. It is very positive. And you got your mama there. You don't got but one mama, and she loves you more than anything in this world. Well, probably besides the grandbaby. I love right? my daughter very much. And this is I know you do, and that's why you're going to get better for your daughter. This is absolutely heartbreaking. Gonna out. Everything's going to work out. So that's how this is going to work out. Miss Pennywell is going to draft me up something, let it go. I'm going to set this out. Would it be if 90 days, Miss Pennywell, be good for you guys to be able to kind of get stuff on the road there? I think so, Your Honor. It's free. And then by then, you guys may have gotten something in the divorce, uh, Mr. Ms. Morse. We all have worked out an agreement, and then this goes away, which would, which would be fantastic. But I do want Ms. Pennywell, when you draft this up, they can talk to me at Zoom. I think Zoom is great because both parties can record it. And then you give it over to Ms. Wine, and, let, and Ms. Wine can look at it. Because if somebody says something that's not appropriate, Ms. Wine can see it, and she can hear it. All right? And uh, go ahead, Ms. Reed, give me another 90 days out for this. That's going to be... June 16, 2 o'clock. June 16, 2 p.m. And it will be, um, Ms. Penny, can you give me that divorce case number so I can send this, uh, yes, all of the pleadings? Yes, ma'am. Hold on one moment. Let me just pull that up for you. Okay, it is 2023 CV 377449. All right. And it is um, a farmer, Judge uh, Kevin Farmer case. Okay, Mr. Morris, do you have a um, do you have a, a lawyer in the divorce case? We haven't even gotten service yet, so I was going to actually ask him for his email if um, I I can send everything to you via email with an attached document that's a acknowledgement of service, which basically just means we don't have to get a process server, or a sheriff's deputy to come hand you the documents. You're agreeing that we gave you a copy of them electronically. Heidi has my email and my phone number. You guys are free to contact me at any okay, time. So you you got to put it in the chat for us. Oh, okay. You type it in the chat for it. Don't, don't put it on here. And one, do you plan on getting a lawyer, sir? Um, It, it seems like I'm going to have to. Well, I didn't, okay, I didn't. I don't have any money. I can't afford it. 
So how are we going to do this as far as the Guardian? I mean, I can afford this $1,500, but that's going to wipe me out. Um, it's fine. I, whatever. If I have to do that to see my child, I'm, I'm happy to. I, I don't want to take away from you being able to get your, your, your mental health stuff, too. You have, uh, you have health insurance that's helping you on that? Um, not once the divorce happens. Okay, but you have you have health insurance right now, right? So you can use it to go get your to go get the therapy and things you need, right? Yeah, no, I'm taking care of with the therapy thing. I, I got hooked up with this organization here in Kentucky. Um, they're helping me out. They seem really good. I like them a lot. I'm I'm, I'm happy about it. Um, there's really no need for any of this. I I volunteered to do everything that's in the, the TPO. Okay, well, see, there you go. See, now you say there's no need for any of it, but see, from what I heard, yeah, there is. All right. So uh, yes, there, yes, there is. I'm sorry. Yeah. If I could, um, if you could give me until the end of the day, let me make, if I can make some telephone calls to see if we could find a guardian who may be a little lighter and say, look, can you take a little less up front? Um, I'm just asking uh, Ms. Wine right now. Oh, okay. Perfect. So reach out to Ms. Wine. You have her number. Reach out to her. I just sent her that. I just sent her all the pleas. Okay. And the divorce in here. She's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and you got to let her know too. Nobody needs to go to anybody's house. Y'all can talk to her. Since you live in Kentucky, you can talk to her there. Uh, meet with her. Let her talk to the child. Have everything done at once, okay? Because that's what's going to run it up. Mr. Morris, you're going to have to be honest with yourself. All right? You got to be honest. You got to be honest. You need this. We got to get you on the right track because we don't want we don't want your daughter having issues in the end. And let me tell you, Mr. Morris, nothing's going to harm your daughter worse than if you harm yourself. That scar will never leave your daughter's mind or your mother. So please, that's, that's why continue, I'm still here. Continue, that's, that's uh, continue. If that's reason. what keeps you here, then let that keep you here. Just think about your mama and your daughter. All right, we'll see you back then. She's gonna email you everything. Uh, we're gonna let's see, Miss Wine. Let's see, Miss Wine. I sent Miss Wine to pleading, so it should have all your contact information. Or yes. Miss Will can pass it on, and she will take care of it. And like I said, as long as you don't ask for a written report, uh, which I'm saying don't because that's just more money, she'll be absolutely fine. And I promise you, all right? And record all the Zoom things. Miss Pennywell, whenever you get that order done, let me know. And you guys should- Who do I email it to, you, Judge? You can email to me and Miss Free. Okay. And uh -huh. also, uh, you guys start communicating through Our Family Wizard, okay? Our Family Wizard um, is a really great program and it's, it's inexpensive. It's only a nominal fee, but that way you can't, it, the Miss Wine will have access to it. And she'll be able to look at it and see what y'all are saying to one another. So if she has some sort of sports or let's say if she gets flu or something like that, you can email only about the child. And that way Miss Wine can look at it to see how the communication is going between the two of y'all. Because there are certain ways you guys need to communicate between the two of y'all about this child. And it's just about child, okay? It's a good thing, Mr. Moore. You got to change your perspective on everything. Once you do that, I think it'll help you. But... I don't have an MD or a PhD, I'm just a JD, but I promise you, I've seen enough of these 17,000 cases that I promise you, it's going to work. Don't let your mama down, don't let your daughter down. Once y'all place your emails in the chat, y'all can go ahead and leave the meeting. And I'm going to wrap it up with my 2 p.m. calendar. Good to see you, Ms. Pennywell. Y'all all selves healthy and safe. Ms. Morris and the other Ms. Morris, very nice to meet you. And Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you as well, Your Honor. All right.